Ethiopia. Information about the country. History. At an archaeological dig in Ethiopia in 1974, experts found Lucy, a skeleton which is believed to be approximately 3.5 million years old. This supports the theory that Ethiopia was once the cradle of mankind. Some 10,000 years ago, peoples from Southern Arabia and Central Africa came to the region now known as Ethiopia, where they settled with the indigenous Kush nomads. Ethiopia takes its name from the Greek Aetiops, meaning person with a burnt face. This was the name given to the entire African continent, south of Egypt in the ancient world. An ancient Ethiopian legend claims that the Axum Empire was established around the year 1000 BC by Menelik I, the oldest son of King Solomon and the Ethiopian Queen of Sheba. Since then, every ruler up until Haile Selassie, Ethiopia's last emperor, has upheld this ancestral link and called himself the King of Kings or the Lion of Judea. The first historical records referring to Axum date back to the first century AD. Between the year 600 and 100 BC, Ethiopia or Abyssinia, as it was also called, was influenced by Sabine culture. Around the year 400 AD, King Ezana was baptized and Christianity became the official state religion. As such, Ethiopia became one of the world's first Christian countries. Although the spread of the Islamic faith increasingly has isolated Ethiopia from the, its former Mediterranean trading partners, Islam never established a foothold in the highlands of Ethiopia. As a result, a unique state emerged unique in African terms in that it successfully resisted external influence. Economic mismanagement and continued attacks from neighboring countries finally led to the downfall of the Axum Empire in the 10th century. Between the 10th and 13th centuries AD, Ethiopia witnessed the influx of many Jewish immigrants. In 1543, Ethiopia again resisted Islamization, this time with the help of the intervening Portuguese troops. Attempts to convert Ethiopia to Roman Catholicism also failed, with the result that all Catholic priests were expelled from the country in the 17th century. The Ethiopian Empire was not spared the European scramble for colonies. By the year 1900, it had lost its entire coast region to Great Britain, France, and Italy. When the Italians attempted to conquer the heartland in 1896, however, they were defeated at Adawa by Emperor Menelik II, the founder of modern-day Ethiopia. Although the province of Eritrea was still under Italian rule, the emperor had succeeded in defending Ethiopia's independence. In 1893, Addis Ababa became the capital of Ethiopia. In 1936, Mussolini's troops conquered Ethiopia and the country was occupied by the Italians for five years. Emperor Haile Selassie, who had come to power in 1930, was defeated by the facial Italian troops during the 1935-36 war and fled to England. Italy then annexed Ethiopia. With British help, the Ethiopians waged guerrilla war against the Italians and re gained their independence in 1941. Emperor Haile Selassie was returned to power and in 1962, the province of Eritrea was annexed by Ethiopia. Increasing dissatisfaction with a corrupt government together with a growing gap between the rich and poor led to an attempted coup d'etat in 1960. Although this failed, a second coup in 1974 led by the military was successful. As a result, the monarchy and the emperor were defeated. The new military dictatorship embarked on a course of change which included the introduction of a land reform. 
Haile Selassie, who had been subject to house arrest since the coup, died one year later. The circumstances surrounding his death are not quite clear. Colonel Mengishu emerged victorious from the ensuing struggle for power within the army and sneered this country on a socialist course. Until he was overthrown in 1991, from 1974, the former Soviet Union supported Ethiopia with economic aid. After Mengishu fled to Zimbabwe in 1991, the Ethiopian People Revolutionary Democratic Front, that is the EPRDF, seized power and set up an interim government. In April 1993, following a 30-year war, Eritrea, the former 14th province, broke away from Ethiopia and declared itself an independent state. Development in the 1990s have already made mass migration within the former border of Ethiopia a fact of life as people returned to their native homelands which they had once left as they fled drought and war. Politics Since Mengishu was overthrown in 1991, Ethiopia had been seeking reform. In 1991, the country became a democratic people's republic. The new constitution came into force in 1995. An interim government that is 87 members and a constitutional assembly that is the five, five members elected in the first free election in 1994 are currently in power. People. Ethiopia is the second most populous African state, south of the Saharan after Nigeria. The population is estimated to 100 million people with approximately 70 ethnic people. The same number of languages are roughly 200 dialects. The population as a whole can be subdivided into various ethnic groupings. Some 40% of the population are Oromos, 30% are Amharas, and 5% Tigrins whilst the remainder belong to the multitude of smaller groups of people such as the Afar or Danakil, Nailot, Sidama and Somali. All 45,000 Jews, that is the Falashas in Ethiopia, were sent back to Israel between 1984 and 1992. Moreover, Ethiopia is also home to approximately 10,000 Italians. War and drought have forced some 2 million Ethiopians to leave their native country and live abroad. Famine has plagued the country for many years. However, many refugees have already returned from Sudan and Somalia. The United Nations estimates that Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world with a gross national product of US dollars 110 in 1994, the average life expectancy is 48 years of age. Education Educational campaigns introduced after the fall of the last emperor have left to a relatively high literacy rate in Ethiopia. School attendance is compulsory for all children up to the age of 12. However, many school buildings still lie in ruins from the war, and as a, as a result, only 17% of school children completely or complete primary education. The official language of education is Amharic, although regional languages are often taught in each respective region. Addis Ababa is one home to Ethiopia's university. 34% of the population is illiterate. <clears throat> As part of former socialist assistant programs, many Ethiopians studied in East European countries, especially in the USSR and the GDR. As a result, many also speak fluent German. Even today, however, Wealthier parents continue to send their children to universities abroad, especially in the USA. Region 
Approximately 48% of Ethiopians are Sunni Muslims and 40% are Christians, while some 10% are animists, that is the followers of natural religions. Moreover, Ethiopia is also home to 1 million Protestants, that is the 230,000 Catholics as well as Sikh and Hindu minorities. Animism is a form of religion which is popular with primitive peoples and supports the belief that all natural objects and phenomena possess a soul. The Arabic-speaking ancestors of the Ethiopian or I mean of the ancient Egyptian Christians are referred to as Copts, sorry, most of whom who live in northern Egypt. Thanks to its advantageous highland regions, Ethiopia was able to remain a Christian, Baptistian, and otherwise Muslim surrounding. For centuries, the church and the empire constituted the pillars of ancient Ethiopia feudal society. The Solomonic legend, according to which every emperor strongly believed in his ancestral links with King Solomon, served for legitimizing the rule and overall power of the emperors. However, the church was also the focal point of art, architecture, music, and giz, the language of religion, which is still used today, even if only within the countries or confines of the church. As such, religion gave birth to a unique civilization. Even today, religious celebrations are important to occasions. Easter is of major importance and is preceded by a period of strict uh, fasting. Other important celebrations include uh, Epiphany on January 6th commemorating the manifestation of Christ. Christmas, that is the Gina, on January 7th. Tim Cut commemorating Christ's baptism in the River Jordan from January 18th to January 20th and Mascal on September 27th, which celebrates the finding of the true cross of Empress Helena. The latter also marks the end of the rain season and is as such celebrated nationally within the family with the dancing and bonfires. There are numerous other celebrations and days of fasting. At various times of the year, every Christian in Ethiopia has a patron saint, usually Gabriel or Michael, whose name they need not, however, necessarily assume. Anyone whose patron saint is Gabriel will endeavor to make a pilgrimage once in his lifetime to the church of Saint Gabriel in Kilubi on the day before Saint Gabriel's feast. In fact, many pilgrimages are made to Kulubu. For example, in January 26, a large festival is held at which thousands of babies are christened. Gabriel wills on December 28 as many as 100,000 people visit the town to pay homage to their holy culture. Religion is the origin of tradition and culture, and all three are close linked in Ethiopia. As well as Christian celebrations, weddings often held on New Year's Day and funerals frequently provide the settling for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guests to meet and celebrate to excess. More often than not, huge debts are incurred by the host. The celebration is continued either one month or one year after the original celebration. In Ethiopia, a bath is only of minor importance. The various ethnic groups of Ethiopia share a common love of jewelry, ornaments, and decoration. The manifests Oh, I mean this manifests itself in a variety of forms, from tattoos on the hands and the face to elaborate plated hairs and gold and silver and jewelry. The cross in various forms and sizes demonstrate the strong influence of the church in Ethiopia. In the 15th century, Emperor Zare Jacob ordered all Ethiopian Christians to wear a cross around their necks. This custom was preserved for many years, however, priests, professional and readiness crosses as well as crowns decorated with crosses dating from the Axum Empire are all so evident that the ancient tradition is still upheld. 
The national highland dress for men and women is known as shama. This is a loose garment woven from white cotton and decorated with colorful edging. It can be worn with a shirt, skirt or trousers. By way of contrast, priests wear colorful embroidered robes. During processions or services, colorful parasols are also held in their heads. Ethiopia followers. All Ethiopia are followers of the Julian calendar, named after Julius Caesar, which consists of 12 months of 30 days each and a 13th month, that is the Pagume, of five or six days. This explains the Ethiopian tourist board promotion slogan, 13 months of sunshine. The day begins at sunrise 6 a.m. rather than at midnight. The Julian calendar is now several years and eight months behind the Gregorian calendar. New Year's Day, that is the Engutatash, falls on September 11. Ethiopians are very polite, proud, peaceful people. They deal with problems in a reserved manner and prefer not to place themselves in the limelight. Hospitality is also extremely important. The Ethiopians are renowned for their exactness and love of bureaucracy. In fact, other African nations refer to them as the Russians of Africa. As in many other countries, religion also determines the code of conduct for the followers of each faith. As roughly half of Ethiopia people or population is Muslim, the rules of the Quran are binding to these people. These rules are described in detail in the Practical Travel Tips chapter for Sudan. Dress is usually a tell-tale sign of the degree to which a person observes the Islamic code of conduct. Men normally wear a long white gown, that is the dhub, with a head covering gutra, whilst women are generally covered with a veil. The tips which follow are applicable to dealing with the Christian Ethiopians, younger people in the cities and business partners, most of whom are familiar with Western behavior. Forms of address and titles. Ethiopians address one another by the Amharic title Ato, that is Mr. and Waisero, Mrs., followed by the corresponding Christian name. Surnames are less important. If one does not know an Ethiopian name, sir and madam are quite sufficient. Less importance is placed on the use of titles when addressing Ethiopians. Greetings. Ethiopians greet one another with an embrace, left, right, left, without touching faces. Members of the opposite sex should exchange verbal greetings only. It is customary to greet a stranger with a gentle handshake. The all-around greeting for any time of day is Tena yes te leng, which means may God give you help. Gestures, etiquette, and taboos. Ethiopians are familiar with the majority of European gestures and rules of behavior. Smoking is prohibited in churches and in the presence of a priest. It is impolite to point a person or people or point at objects. If one has no choice but to point, the whole hand should be used. Before entering a church or mosque, it is essential to remove one's shoes. One must take care when taking photographs. It is prohibited to take photographs of public buildings, people in uniform, bridges, railways, and a military establishment for any nature. Not anyone is accustomed to having their pictures taken and, for this reason, it is best to ask first. Conservative dress is advisable at public events or business meetings. Men should wear long trousers, a shirt and tie. A jacket can be dispensed with due to the heart. Whilst ladies are expected to wear a knee-length dress, or skirt, it is best to combine the latter with a long-sleeved blouse. 
The left hand is considered to be unclean in Ethiopia. For this reason, it should not be used when passing or handing things to others, nor when receiving something from one person. It is wise to double check the times of business meetings, as the Ethiopians divide their day into two 12 hour parts, each beginning at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m., or 6 p.m., in other words. If you plan to meet an Ethiopian at 2 p.m., it will be 8 o'clock for him. The calculation of time according to the Julian calendar further complicates the problems. Ethiopians only visit people when invited. Small gifts are greatly appreciated and should be accepted with both hands. Food and drink. In general, Ethiopians are familiar with Western eating habits. Muslims, however, are not allowed to consume certain foods or drinks such as pork or alcohol. Tradition states that Ethiopians should eat with their right hand, and the left hand is considered unclean. Bread or injera is used as catenary, a wooden spoon, and a knife are sometimes used, however. Water or soap are passed around a meal. I mean, water and soap are passed around after a meal. This should be used to wash one's hands. Afternoon is coffee time. This is prepared and served in a time-consuming manner, comparably to a ceremony. First, the green coffee beans are presented to the guests who should examine them. Then, they are roasted and ground to a powder. The guests are given various spices which are tested for their aroma. These are then boiled together with the powder and the strong sweet coffee is served in small espresso cups. The entire process is repeated if more coffee is desired. Desserts are not part of a traditional Ethiopian meal. In some regions of Ethiopia, cut, a type of drug is chewed in the afternoon. Ethiopia is believed to be the home of this plant. Men in particular chew for hours on end on the green leaves, which have an anesthetizing effect. Conversation. Ethiopians enjoy talking about most general topics such as health, life, and the history of their country. Most of Ethiopians do not generally talk about personal or private matters. Short phrases for everyday situations. The official language is Amharic. It originated in the Axum Empire and was developed from the Sabine alphabet. Oromogna, English, Italian, French, and Arabic are the major languages of business and education. All in all, one can encounter as many as 70 languages and 200 dialects in Ethiopia. General greeting, may God bless you, or health, is also interpreted as ten years ten seleng. Thank you, interpreted as amese gina lehu. Please, interpreted as ibakuo. How are you? is also interpreted as Dahina Nut. Good is also interpreted as Dahina. Goodbye is also interpreted as Dahina Hunu. Bye for young people is also interpreted as Xiao. Culinary Delights. Many people claim that Ethiopia cuisine is the specialist in Africa. Blends of various herbs such as berbere or red pepper powder or alicia green pepper powder mixed with roughly 15 other spices, for example, basil, garlic, rosemary, onions, ginger, and mustard seeds have quite literally spiced up the evening for many foreign visitors. The most important plant is teff, a type of millet, which is used to make the national dish that is the injera. 
Anyone who has tried this foam rubber bread will not have forgotten its sour taste. This bread or pancake foam is eaten rolled up with various types of filling. What? Ethiopia's national dish consists of meat that is the ciga wort, chicken, doro wort, or vegetables, alitia wort, and it is also eaten with a spicy sauce made of bear berry and other spices. Siga or alista is beef roasted in onions, eggs, or spices. Mir or telej and millet beer are popular local drinks. One should only drink bottled beverages or bottled water. The local mineral water is also called ambo. Restaurants. With one's health in mind, it is only advisable to eat in selected restaurants. Even there, however, certain health precautions should be also kept in mind. As the following restaurants are well known in the capital, the address is not important for taxi purposes. The name of the establishment is quite sufficient. There are several restaurants in the Addis Ababa Hilton Hotel. A pizzeria, a coffee shop, that is kaffa shop, which serves snacks during the day and offers a traditional Ethiopian dinner on Sundays, and Jacaranda, a first-class restaurant serving international dishes. Gion Hotel regularly organizes Ethiopian nights at which local specialists are served. Castelli is an excellent Italian restaurant with an extremely bullet of a piece. Sorry? I mean, Castelli is an excellent Italian restaurant with an extensive buffet and a pleasant atmosphere near the piazza. The restaurant Taj serves Indian cuisine and a good curry, opposite the stadium. Hong Kong is a reasonably prized Chinese restaurant near the Lufthansa town office. The cottage, restaurant and pub serves as Swiss specialists. China Bar near the Gion Hotel is the place to go for Peking cuisine. Le Petit Paris serves excellent international cuisine near Old Airport. Sightseeing. Ethiopia Addis Ababa, which means new flower, was founded by Menelik II in 1887 and has been the capital of Ethiopia since 1893. Standing 2,400 meters above sea level, it has a population of approximately 3 million people. The city is surrounded by large forests and eucalyptus trees which Emperor Menelik II introduced from Australia. The Ethiopian capital is a colorful kaleidoscope of styles, modern buildings, monuments and boulevards reflect the country's special past whilst ancient churches and houses are relics of the imperial era. On the other hand, however, the small huts built with corrugated iron together with the playful children, stray animals and women cooking in the street are a reminder of the poverty. City tours can be booked at most of the travel agencies in the major hotels. City tours usually take place in the following attractions. The National Museum which documents Ethiopian history until the days of imperialism. Here, one can also visit Lucy, a 3.5 million year old skeleton. The Endological Museum at the University, which contains an exhibition of handicrafts. The University itself was founded in 1961 in the former palace, 1932 of Haile Selassie. Africa Hall is a modern building, which houses the headquarters of the UN, Economic Commission of Africa. UNECA and the Organization of Africa Unity, OAU. Glass paintings by Ethiopia artists Afiwak Teke are particularly impressive. Stefano Cathedral. Haile Selassie was crowned emperor in St. George's Cathedral or George's Cathedral, which was built in 1896. The Mercato is Africa's largest open-air market. 
To make it easy to find one around, it has been divided into sections for household goods, vegetables, fruit, clothing, spices, etc. It is best to visit in groups or as part of an organized city tour as it is often a playground for pickpockets. Ethiopia is very much a land of great contrasts and fascinating sceneries, such as Rift Valley, the Blue Nile, with its many waterfalls, the tropical rainforest, the desert and the salt plains, the refreshing highlands, the feeling that is left by 3,000 years of history, an interesting flora and fauna over 800 species of birds, for example. However, it is not always wise to embark on an excursion within the country as certain regions are not particularly safe. It is best to inquire at the embassy before setting out. Moreover, tours should only be undertaken with a reliable local guide or as part of an organized tour group. Most tour operators offer the following day trips. To the north of Addis Ababa is Mount Entoto, a mountain ridge from which one has a splendid view of the capital. Here, in 1885, Menelik II laid the foundation stone for the Mariam Cathedral, in which his coronation as emperor was held four years later. Rift Valley, some 200 kilometers south of Addis Ababa, is of particular interest to nature lovers as it is home to a unique array of bird species such as flamingos or white pelicans and also offer a breathtaking view. The western bay of Lake Langano are not only ideal for various aquatic spots, they are also where one can find a place to spend the night in hotels, bungalows and tents. Exhumed the former imperial city to the north of the capital Gondar with its impressive palaces and castles, and the former capital city of Lalibela in the highlands somewhat remote, however, are further tourist attractions. Harare, west of Addis Ababa, is the fourth holiest city for Muslims after Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. The city, which is still surrounded by its ancient city walls, has 99 mosques. The market is one of the most beautiful in Ethiopia and a good place to purchase handicrafts. Cultural Highlights Folkloric music and dance shows at the Addis Ababa Hilton Hotel Harar Greer should not be missed. The Goethe Institute, the Italian Cultural Institute and the British Council are the local or locations of regular fin shows, exhibitions and concerts. Shopping Popular souvenirs from Ethiopia include silver jewelry, Ethiopian crosses, icon and colorful paintings, colorful woven baskets, pottery, and wood carvings. As a rule of thumb, the shops are open between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. and again from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. On Saturdays, they are usually only open in the morning until 1 p.m. The best shops are on the so-called Paza and on Churchill Road. A visit to the Mekato district is not necessarily very safe. It is wisest to go by car with a reliable local driver. In any case, any valuables, jewelry and important papers should be left in the hotel safe. The small handicraft alleys are the best place to go for silver jewelry as well as for instruments, weapons and pictures. Items belonging to the church may not be exported. Similarly, permission from the Ministry of Culture is required for the export of any object of historical importance. Anyone wishing to export Ethiopian crosses and icons should require a certificate from the National Museum to prove that the objects are not ancient objects of historical value. Public holiday. January 6, Epiphany. January 7, Coptic Christmas. January 19, Tim Cut or Christmas Baptism in the River Jordan. April 6, National Day or Victor Day. May 1, Labor Day or May Day. 
August 8th, Mohammed's birthday. September 11th, Coptic New Year. September 27th, Maskai of Finding the True Cross. Moreover, there are also numerous other Islamic such as Ramadan and Eid al Fitri and Christian such as Easter or Christmas celebrations. It is wise to inquire as to visa requirement before embarking on a journey to Ethiopia. Any Ethiopian embassy can provide the information. Visitors from most countries require a visa. It is unwise to walk anywhere alone after dusk and the crime rate has risen sharply over the years. This has been the result of increasing poverty and the thousands of unemployed, homeless, but nevertheless armed soldiers who roam the streets. Ethiopia spreads across several varying climatic zones. The most striking difference is between the striking heat of the lowlands and the refreshing very cold nights in the highlands. For this reason, one has to pack appropriate clothing. Loose cotton clothing is best together with cool shoes and a warm pullover. Moreover, sun cream, sunglasses and a sun hat are also a good idea. Because of the attitude at which Addis Ababa stands, it does not take long before one finds oneself burnt by the sun. As Addis Ababa is situated at an altitude of 2,400 meters, a malaria photophilatic is not necessary, as long as one stays in the city. It is advisable to take precautions against malaria. However, if one intends to undertake an excursion out with the capital, the national currency is the Ethiopian beer or ETB, one may not import or export more than ETB-10. Moreover, the amount of foreign currency is one's possession, or I mean in one's possession must be declared on arrival. Money may not only be changed by hotel cashiers or in the central bank. Changing money in the black market is strictly forbidden and carries a punishment of up to one year in prison. It is wise to take a small amount of low denomination notes, as some shops take Western currency. A 10% tip is customary. There are two types of taxis in Addis Ababa. The cheapest blue taxis, no insurance, which have no taxi meter. In other words, the price must be negotiated before selling off. And the more expensive beige taxis, Mercedes with red number plates. The latter can be ordered in hotels and at travel agencies. As Ethiopia is one of the most poorest countries, many aid organizations such as the SOS Children Village, Mother Teresa, Home and People for People, that is the mention for mention, have set up branches there. However, Flight, flight attendants are particularly proud of Hope, that is EV, which was set up by seven flight attendants in 1993 to encourage and coordinate the work begun by many of their colleagues over the years for numerous aid projects across the world. Hope EV has established intensive contact with three organizations in Addis Ababa, namely the Signum Vitae, I hospital and workshop for the disabled, the Brush, Tesfa, Children Village and School, and the German Development Service at the Black Iron Hospital. Hope EV intends to maintain personal control over the distribution of financial donations and gifts in kind. Members also make regular visits to our partner organizations.